What's up guys? Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at how we can move this calendar um, from our Rails app into our gem. So we created yesterday this really sweet balance between Ruby and ERB and I'm actually really impressed with how that turned out. Um, and if you're familiar with Devise, which is one of my favorite gems that I use in almost every application, they have this fallback. So they have views that let's pull that up actually let's just hop on to their github page and so basically devise if you're not familiar with it you can create a user model it has a bunch of uh views for you to use like sign up sign in forgot your password edit your account it does all of that out of the box really really easily and if we dive into their code here you can see in their views devise folder that is all of the different views that they provide. Now, this is really cool because it allows you to install Devise and not have any new views in your application, but they easily make it so that you can generate and install these into your application, and they'll basically copy all of these into your Rails app so that you can customize them, and it's, it's wonderful. Like, it's really, really easy to use. And that, I think, is the, the balance that I want to strike with Simple Calendar. So you want to use a month calendar, a week calendar, a four-day agenda calendar out of the box? Great. You don't need to install any views into your Rails app. But if you want to customize those, I'll have you generate those and install them into your app. We'll make copies, and then you're able to create your own calendars using that. And you'll be able to control that code without having to deal with like all this magic inside of a gem. Um, that should solve, I think, most of our problems. There's really the balance that I was hoping to strike, and I didn't realize we were going to basically just kind of copy Devise when I started this. It turns out to be really, really great. So um, let's take a look at what we've got. So I actually have this calendar application, the Rails app that we created, and we made the views, meetings, calendar file yesterday. And this is great. Um, but we actually want to move this into our gem so that it shows up there by default, and then you can um, and you can basically like render this or copy this into your Rails app, and we'll we'll render whichever um, exists first. So let's actually move this out into our gem. So I'm going to move app views meetings calendar into. Um, Simple calendar, we need to actually make a make directory app views. Um let's do let's just let's do them all top level here. I think that's totally fine. Um actually no, let's put them in a simple calendar folder. Um so we'll do that and then that should uh, mean that in your Rails app, when we install these, you would have an app views, simple calendar, calendar, week calendar, month calendar, HTML, ERB files. So that would allow us to um, basically namespace all of our templates in your Rails app in the simple calendar folder, which makes a lot of sense. It's exactly what Devise does, and uh, it's definitely worth doing. So we'll make that, and then we'll hop back over and finish our move. And here we can do the app views simple calendar folder. And that should be that. So I'm curious, we move the file into the gem. I'm curious um, what happens. I'm assuming that we're going to get a missing template, and we do. And basically this says, like, well, we can't find the calendar template anymore. And we're looking in these two directories. So um, right now it's looking for meetings calendar um, in that folder or application calendar. And then you can see, so within that, um, within the Rails app, it looks in those two folders, meetings, then application. But you can also see that it's searched in um, this one directory. So these are actually like our search paths. And we want to make uh, a search path inside of our gem once it's installed. So we want to make sure that that gets added. And I'm not quite sure how to do this, nor am I sure how Devise does that. But I'm wondering if we can accomplish it by just setting up um, something simple. So let's open up the code for Simple Calendar. Um, 
And I can't remember, but I believe I did have a rail tie. So I'm wondering in a rail tie if we're able to add this directory in as a search path. Um, and maybe we are. Maybe we also want to try restarting our Rails app and see if that uh, affects anything. But I believe we have to kind of like tell Rails that that's a folder that we want to make sure that we um, we look for that in. And also there might be something important here that we need to say is simple calendar slash calendar because we have now put that in a separate folder. So let's open up the calendar file here and we're looking for the simple calendar calendar partial this time. So let's restart our Rails app and try this once more. I'm just kind of experimenting because I uh, I'm not completely sure on how all this works. Um, I know that one thing with like if you're creating a gem for uh, a front end library, when you just add the rail tie, all of the app views like or app assets folders are like automatically um, findable. So that one's really interesting. We really just need to add this into the template path. So let's look this up. Rails template path. Uh, let's see. We really want to Rails add to the template path. We don't really need to, um, let's append to template path actually. That might be a better thing. So we need to basically have our gem append this into the application. Um, so we may not be able to find this necessarily easily. Um, none of these seem path app views. Okay, so I just did a little bit of digging. I didn't really find anything for like 15 minutes, so I kind of cut that out because it wasn't very interesting. But it led me down this path of like, I don't really know exactly what I'm trying to search for, but I do remember that I set up this Rails rail tie. Um, and this basically allowed me to say, hey, when Rails loads, let's add configuration values in there so that we can do some stuff. And so this was like, hey, um, we're going to set an initializer and then action view base um, should get the view helpers from my gem included in that. And that got me thinking there's this other thing called a rail tie, or th there's rail ties, and then there's this other thing called a, a Rails engine. And engines are kind of like miniature Rails apps inside of a gem. So you could put like a mini Rails app inside another Rails app. And that got me thinking, like, maybe we should find out the difference. Um, so I think one of the things, rail tie versus engine. Um, one of the things that's important to note here is um, the difference there. Uh, the first kind of result you get on Stack Overflow is, of course, that a rail tie can probably do what you describe. Um, he's, I'm not really sure what he's going after, but it may be more desirable to use an engine. The engine can have its own configuration and also acts like a Rails application since it allows you to include the app directory with controllers, views, and models in the same manner as a regular Rails app. And that's really what we're trying to do here. We want our gem to have sort of the fallback of we're going to look first in your Rails application for the calendar, um, and that would be if you overrode ours. And then if we don't find anything, then we'll go fall back to the gem and we'll use that template. So actually, probably it's a Rails engine that we really want here. Um, and if I remember right, I think we can look up on Go Rails. Um, there, the episode of going back here to creating a gem for a front end library, I can't remember for sure or not, but I believe that I created an engine in that case. And that is one of those things that um, was the special, uh, the special syntax or like class that you just needed. Like, it was an engine, it was a Rails engine, and that was the key piece of why it wasn't working with our gem automatically because I set up a rail tie and not an engine. And the engines just load differently and Rails does different things with those. Um, 
So that's an interesting thing. I'm not very familiar with these, but now I'm starting to get a better idea of the separation between them. And I want to dive some more into those in the future. It's kind of magical how easy that is to just define a class. Um, so chances are we can just define a class called engine here. And it inherits from Rails engine. And it's empty. And that's it. And I think this will work. It's kind of magical how that works. And I'm really like impressed and also sort of disappointed because it's not clear what it does. Of course it works. So that's all we really needed. Um, we just needed to add a Rails engine into our application. Um, that was kind of wonderful. At the same time, it kind of sucks because we don't actually know what the heck it's doing. Um, it's kind of just setting up all these defaults, but I would love to have like a broken out list of like, what really does an engine do? We can probably look that up in the Rails docs, but I'll do that later. Um, right now, we've accomplished exactly what we want. We've got the calendar loading from Simple Calendar in the gem. And if we dive into our Rails um, logs, here we can see in the render uh, lines here in the logs, this one rendered the meetings index um, but we can also see right above it, before you could render the full index, you had to render out the calendar, which comes from the gems path, which is so cool. Like, that was as easy as, as, as it was to get this going. So now we can start by uh, probably tomorrow making the week calendar or the month calendar, making separate templates for those. And then after that, we can run the, like, generators so we can override these files. And I bet you... If we go and copy that file that we just moved over, so we go grab simple calendar app views, simple calendar, calendar. Um, oh wait, first we need to, let's cancel that. First we need to make an app views simple calendar folder. And then if we make a copy of the partial that we moved over to the gem, and we made a copy of that in our app views simple calendar, calendar a uh, HTML ERB file, I bet we can go and hop into the source code here and we could just like, yeah, maybe we don't want the title or the dates or any of that or the links to the next and previous ones. And I bet if we refresh, it will load the local version um, and we can double check in our Rails logs. And if we look at this now, it doesn't say slash users, Chris, code, simple calendar, gem, all that stuff. Now it just does a relative path to the simple calendar folder inside the app views folder. So this is actually working exactly how we expected it. It starts with the, um, the Rails application that you're running. It looks in the app views folders, tries to find a match. If it doesn't, it looks in the gems that you have included. And if they're an engine, it will um, check out their app views folders and then do like a, a full um, render from a whole different directory, which is super cool. So this actually is working exactly as expected. This is gonna be amazing for customizing it because you'll be able to make your own views inside the simple calendar folder. You probably won't have to do any magic with that. Um, and that will be as simple as it is. You can add all the classes you want. You can customize this as much as you want. And there really is not a whole lot of like magic going to this. So we're making some really, really good progress. And I love how this is turning out. I'm like super impressed. Um, I didn't know where we were going before we started the vlog. So that's really cool. So tomorrow, let's make the month calendar happen um, with a month calendar HTML ERB file. See you then. Peace.